Well, the 12 year age statement is now gone on the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Batch B523 coming in at 11 years, five months. The question is, how is that going to translate over to, again, the newest batch from Elijah Craig Barrel Proof B523? You know what we're gonna do? Let's take a look at that today on the My Bourbon Journey Whiskey Review Channel. Well, like I mentioned on the intro, the 12 year age statement is now gone on the newest release from Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Batch B523. And again, the question is, how is that going to impact the overall flavor profile of, again, the newest batch B523? We're gonna dive into that today again here on the My Bourbon Journey Whiskey Review Channel. So let's talk a little bit about what batch B523 has to offer. So again, this is coming in at, again, 11 years, five months. 124.2 proof. It is age dated again, 11 years, five months. And it's still a pretty friendly in terms of what it is you're getting $75 as far as the MSRP goes. So let's go ahead and take a look at the color. So as you can see, still pretty typical, that dark, rich kind of copper, you know, medium mahogany type of color. Again, move the whiskey around in the glass. You're still getting some beautiful oils on the glass. So that's already a good thing to see. On, on this so far. Why don't you say we go ahead and dive into the nose? So right off the bat, I'm getting this fresh roasted peanut note. Little bit of like a dark kind of heavy roast or dark roast coffee, something that almost is borderline like burnt coffee. Really nice baking spices on it so far. Not a lot of heat coming off the glass, which I'm a little bit surprised. Again, I've had this bottle now open for about two weeks and in this glass for about 10 minutes prior to the review. Kind of slight vanilla custard on that. The oak on this, I'm gonna say, is a little bit more prevalent than I remember being on the other ones. Maybe a little bit less sweet than some of the others. A little bit more of that kind of barrel char kind of coming out. One other thing I'll say is that I'm getting more on this batch is a little bit more of a rye spice, more of even along the lines of like a rye bread. So there's a little bit more of a, of a pungency to this. Maybe some earthy kind of notes. Definitely less sweet than, you know, the batch A123 was. That was pretty sweet, pretty well balanced. So far, this is a little heavier on kind of the drier notes, maybe a little bit more of that deeper oak little drier oak, more of that kind of roasted peanut kind of note. Little hint of butterscotch on that as well. But yeah, definitely some nice baking spices on the nose. Nice nose so far, so nothing to complain about. Fairly consistent with what it is you kind of get with a lot of the Elijah Egg Barrel Proofs. Maybe just a little bit less sweet than, than some of the more recent ones. All right, more importantly, let's, uh, let's see how this one's gonna taste. Cheers. Yeah, I'll say my, my first or initial thought is this kind of heavier barrel char, dry oak kind of presence. There is still that little bit of a roasted peanut kind of note, but the one thing that's lingering for me like immediately are those kind of earthy notes, you know, drier oak kind of notes so far. I'm even thinking that a little bit of the, the oak tannin is starting to kind of affect this a little bit more than what I remember on some of the prior batches. I'll also say there was a little bit of a, more of a, a dry kind of dark fruit. I don't think it's overly fresh. There seems to be a little bit more of that, uh, I don't wanna quite say harshness, but again, the oak influence on this is kind of taking over some of the other things that feel like they want to kind of come to the forefront. It's just being kind of pressed down a little bit because of the oak presence, but there is still a little bit of that, that kind of dry red fruit that's there, maybe, you know, less sweet, a little bit of a, a vanilla custard. I wouldn't say it's overly heavy by any means. The baking spice is definitely there. A little bit more of the cinnamon than anything, a little bit of black pepper as well. 
I don't think that this one so far is as well balanced as definitely the A123 and maybe even going back to the releases in 2022. Those felt a little bit more refined, a little bit more balanced. This for me is coming across a little bit heavier barrel char, more of those kind of tannic notes that are there, more of a dried red fruit, not as much sweetness, a little bit of like vanilla or vanilla custard that's there, some cinnamon notes that are there, a little bit of a kind of Kentucky hug that it's giving you, again, at 124.2 proof, there's gonna still be a little bit of that. Um, I will say, as you kind of transition or think about the finish part of it, it's feeling like I want to keep sipping on it to see what else it's going to do. I don't think the finish for me is overly long uh, by any means. Uh, but the one thing that's kind of still standing out to me is the fact that it's dominated a little bit heavier on the more tannic oak. There's more of that barrel char influence, you know, and any of the sweet notes that are there feel like they want to come out they're just not there so maybe as this thing opens up a month or two down the road maybe some of that stuff will come out um it's just really hard to tell and again i've had this bottle now open for about two weeks so i've given it a little bit of time to kind of open up and maybe try to do a little bit of something because when i first opened it right off the uh the neck pour I would say some of those notes were even more prevalent than what it is I'm describing today. So maybe things will start to kind of get a little bit better, you know, but it is what it is at this point now being open about two weeks. Now, here's what I'll say value wise. I think overall, you know, in terms of what it is you're getting, even at 11 years, five months, and who knows what the C batch will bring in terms of a, an age statement there. But I think what you're getting overall at that $75 range still makes it a, a great bourbon to have. The one thing I'm thinking about this so far and at this point of doing the review, this isn't something I'm necessarily going to want to rush out and, and grab a backup of. I don't think it's worthy of that like the A batch was. I thought that was absolutely a fantastic, incredibly well-balanced uh, bourbon and definitely worthy of a, of a backup. This one, I'm a little hesitant to say that. I just don't think it's quite there. I think it's missing on a few things, you know, in terms of the, the overall richness, complexity. I just don't think the balance is quite there on this one. Again, I don't know if that, that additional, you know, seven months that it's, you know, less than the 12 year age statement is impacting things or, or not. But for me, in terms of the batches that they've kind of put together for this or the barrels that they put together for the batch, seems to be a little bit heavier this time on the, the oakier notes. So, you know, it's still lingering oak, barrel char, a little bit of that dried fruit, maybe a touch of a, a vanilla custard, more cinnamon notes, so richer, more like earthy kind of notes, I'll, I'll say. So not as much sweetness as there have been on some of the prior batches. I'd love to know if this is a batch that you've had yet. Uh, if so, are you picking up some of the same things that I have? Obviously, I would love to hear back from you guys on, on that. But again, I think so far for this B batch, it's a little bit of a, of a miss so far. I'll be interested to see again where the C batch goes. So, you know, that's one thing that's always fun about the different batches throughout the year. What is it that you're going to get from, from release to release? And, you know, this one, obviously, in comparison to the A123, for me, kind of misses the, the boat on, um, on most fronts. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I uh, really appreciate you tuning in to another one of my reviews. Uh, remember, you can always follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of those places at My Bourbon Journey. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, and become part of the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club, make sure you check out the link and other links in the description below. A lot of other good stuff down there as well. So thank you again. And remember, it's about the journey and not the destination. Cheers.